Hello everyone and welcome back. I hope things are well. Hello everyone and welcome back. It is a nice feeling today knowing that I won't be struck by any objects during the making of this video. And it's also quite a nice feeling because, well, it's a good day. Again, for the cast tonight, it was a great press conference this morning from Eddie Howe. Lots of positive comments, even about the likes of Fabian Shaw, a player who we were taught will not come back this season. Now it seems like it's actually possible he could squeeze back into this season, so that's a good start. On top of that, obviously transfer news. This video is going to be mainly focused on the yes sector man you stuff because it's so ludicrous and it's so factually incorrect and so untrue that I feel like it's a good opportunity for us to have a laugh because it's hilarious how bad this post is. So we'll get into that in a bit. But there's plenty going on over the past couple of days. Of course, the secret driver has now been revealed. It is, in fact, Alexander Isaks. We were correct in saying that. However, no contract extension. It wasn't a announcement from the F1 Newcastle Club and all of a sudden he's got a contract extension. It's nothing like that. It's just he was a secret driver. So when all those rumours are going around social media, it could potentially be a bit more than that. It feels a bit anticlimactic, the video, but it was exactly secret driver. And we are taking on Brighton tomorrow. Big, big match. A team that has been struggling all season long. I've had worse injury crisis than us. They've actually somehow had a worse injury issue going forward. And it's the castle. We've got to beat Brighton. No excuses tomorrow. Go out on that pitch. We've got near our full squad back now. Q and Trippy as expected to come back in tomorrow as well as our three returning players last week. Joel Linton, Almoron and Pope were all on the bench against Burnley. They've got to use these players, got to utilise them and got to make sure we pick up three huge points now and then we can look forward to that huge Old Trafford clash during the week against Manchester today. It is up to us to get the job done now, guys. And for all of you watching this video, make sure you get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, you enjoy the content just to make sure you keep up to date because there's plenty of videos coming out. I'm so busy at the minute. Obviously, again, going to Australia next week, so we've got plenty of content we've got to do here before we go away. And then when we go away, we've got to do all the content over there. So there's a lot going on. Stay tuned so you don't miss any of it. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. We shall start things off on the transfer side of things. Tozen Adebayo, Fulham centre-half, free sign in the summer, just like Lloyd Kelly at Bournemouth. It has now been reported on social media that Newcastle are the front runners in the race to sign him. They are the odds on favourites as things stand. However, we mentioned this with Lloyd Kelly a couple of days ago. That one seems like it's almost done already, according to some reports. So, my personal belief is that we won't sign both centre halves. I think we'll get one in on a three. I know both them are free agents, so Newcastle, in all honesty, could just go out there now and get two centre halves in, both on threes, and have a full back line at that point. But my issue being is that, well, both of these players won't want to be rotation players. I think one of them probably won't mind it so much being potentially a third choicer. But if you've got two in there, it's straight away, it's probably going to have some red flags over what Newcastle is actually going to offer these centre halves. I just feel like these centre halves are going to want first team football. And you can't guarantee them that in Newcastle because we've got Shaw, these two, Botman and Lascelles. Obviously, Lascelles is not going to be a starter, but we've got five good centre halves there. Those two that come in won't want to be just sitting on the bench all season long. So you've got to be able to balance them into the team. And I feel like we can probably only do that with one centre-half. Yes, Botman and Lissels are out going into next season, but they're not out for too long in next season. They picked up ACL injuries. They might be out for potentially a couple of months, which is somewhat of a concern. But I still feel like one centre-half you're only going to need because Dan Byrne can cover in centre-half. I actually prefer the guy playing in centre-half. So straight away, you've got four centre-halves there. You, you don't need more than that, in my opinion, for the couple of months it would take for Botman and Lissels to come back. And then at that point, Newcastle can then have two more centre-halves in the team. So my personal opinion, I think we'll only get one of these two centre-halves. I don't know which one it would be. Uh, I will probably bank on Lloyd Kelly more, if I had to be honest. I don't know too much about Tossin, but he's definitely a centre-half where he's got a lot of demand at the minute. Free siding, you can't say enough to either of them. And if I had to bank on someone, I'll back Lloyd Kelly. And I feel like Lloyd Kelly, from what I have seen from a Bournemouth, top centre-half, it's a no-brainer. So whichever one we bring in, I think we'll definitely get one of these two centre-halves. So keep an eye on the pair of them. I don't know which one we'll get, but I feel like one of them will come to this football club. Let's talk about Eddie Howe's press conference now, because a lot of positive information has came out today. And let's start with the elephant in the room. 
Fabian Shaw. I wasn't expecting any news about Fabian Shaw to come out. We got taught about a week ago now. He's not going to play again this season. And he gets asked about it today in the press conference. And Eddie Howe's comments were actually quite positive. He hasn't ruled Shaw out from coming back. He's actually said it's potentially possible that we'll see him again this season. And things are looking well for him. Of course, don't rush him in. And I feel like it will be dependent on how Newcastle's results are. Let's say now it'll beat Brighton, beat Man U. They're not, they're not going to put the guy in from Brentford if we've already got European football at that point. I feel like he would only come in if we're desperately near them, let's say. If someone got injured or Newcastle just had a, a must-win scenario at Brentford, they'll probably bring the guy in. But other than that, don't rush him back. We've got the Australia trip there for the youngsters and our players anyway, so... If we need to get some game time out of him, just play him for a few minutes in Australia. Just don't rush him in these games and we don't need to do it. Because I feel like Newcastle's defensive unit burning craft. It's so weird because, well, Newcastle's big players get injured. And then you could argue in Burning Craft's case, the crap defenders come in and the crap defenders play quite well. So it's incredible, isn't it, how Eddie Howe is just jealous team because our team on paper, when you look at some of the players, you think, well, how, how is Kraft going to work with centre-half? He just works it. I mean, well, works. He's, he's such a good centre-half when he, when he plays. It's just so, it's so mental Eddie Howe can just get the best out of players like that. You've got to give a manager a lot of credit for that because he's been shafted this season with injury suspensions and um, we're still... Well and truly in contention for Europe now. It is ours to lose. If we don't get Europe this season, it's because we lost it. We can't. It's nobody else. We've literally got the games to do it. We're above Man U. We're above Chelsea. It is up to us to do the job. And we've got to do what the games have got left now. But speaking about our players, he's obviously spoken at length about Joel and Nam and those two are fine. Obviously, Kieran Tripp, yeah, I said last week was chalk to come back in for Brighton tomorrow. Eddie Howe more or less confirms that Trippier is going to play tomorrow. I think... And Typical how fashion you will tend to not give a hundred percent answer, but we all know he's come back in the morning. Let, let's be honest, Kieran's going to be back in the squad. Jonas Gutierrez is also going to be uh, in Newcastle tomorrow. By the way, it's like you all know. Obviously, I was at his event last night with Pete Graves. Uh, he spoke at length about his love for the football club. It was actually quite lovely to watch. So we'll quickly put a, a clip on now. He came so close to the brink, but fought back from life-threatening cancer. Battled his way back to match fitness and went and saved Newcastle United from relegation on the final day before being cruelly dumped by the club's former owner. Over the phone, no less. It's been almost a decade, ladies and gentlemen, since he left Tyneside. And tonight, for the first time, he's back in his beloved Newcastle. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for John. And the reason why I've just mentioned that in the video there is because he actually will be on St James's Park at half time. He'll come on. This is the first time he'll be back in Newcastle since he got released by Mike Ashley. So it's a great opportunity for him to kind of come in, make amends with the club because the club treat him like absolute shy considering the guy had testicular cancer. And uh, just to get him and Ryan Taylor out uh, over the telephone as well. We'll see, see both of them back now. Uh, of course, Ryan Taylor working as ambassador, but they're seeing both back with affiliation with the club. It is great to see. So uh, yeah, he'll be on the pitch at half time tomorrow. And speaking of tomorrow, I've got more or less a full team back now. So no excuses, get out on that pitch and let's show Brighton what we can do. Normally I wouldn't highlight these opposition fan links to our players on social media because I feel like this one is just so ludicrous. It's quite entertaining and I think you guys quite enjoy this little article as we don't bunk it down. So listen carefully to what his Manchester United Forever page has to say as an exclusive on Twitter. Manchester United looking at the possibility of bringing in Alexander Isak as per a recommendation from Dan Ashford. I mean, first off, let me stop you there. Uh, legally, by law, Dan Ashford cannot work with Manchester United at the minute. He's not allowed to work in any capacity with Manchester United while on garden and leave. Garden and leave means he sits at home until his contract's up until Manchester United buy out contract. He cannot work. He can't offer any suggestions. He can't make any links. He can't make any connections to the football club. Because legally, he's not working with Manchester United. He cannot do that by law. And that's what Newcastle United's contract states. But yeah, straight away, that's not even possible. 
He secondly goes into detail about how Newcastle need to sell a big player on the FFP. Again, not true. Newcastle do need to sell players yet. Does not have to be a big one at all. Let's see if you were to clear, you get rid of Callum Wilson, about £15 million. Pounds, and we're on around £25 million, And you get rid of one player, maybe long stuff or something for um, £20-25 million pounds or so. Straight away, that's player sales out. They're not big players. They're not your key star players. And you can actually make player sales elsewhere. Not to mention, Newcastle will have a lot of sponsorship money coming in. They'll have a lot of money in general just coming in. So, yes, I do agree that Newcastle do need to sell because you definitely need players sales on the FFP laws. But you don't need to sell your big players. That's not necessarily the case. You can actually sell some more players and still be able to recuperate money that way. So, straight away, uh, I also don't think that's true. And thirdly, let's not forget, Man U's a downgrade in Newcastle. Uh, it's quite literally a downgrade. You guys are blows on the table. Um, obviously, it is a possibility that Man U could beat Newcastle and finish above us. But even then, is that enough to get his side to jump ship with Manchester United? Absolutely no chance. You guys need to be badly hum humbled. I mean, honestly, they, they still think it's 2008 or something. You haven't got Ferguson anymore. You haven't got Rooney anymore. You haven't got your prime team anymore. You've got a bunch of crap players, let's be honest. You've got a bunch of useless players. There's very few Manchester United players I would actually take in Newcastle's squad. I, I don't even know which ones I would take. Manu, maybe Rashford. There's not much more now. Bruno Fernandes, but older than that. I wouldn't take any of your players. Uh, Manchester United are such a degraded team now. They're downgraded so much. Uh, there's no way in hell this section up the Manu. If he was going to leave, it would not be the Manchester United. So straight away, uh, I thought that was a hilarious article to talk about. And hopefully it's a bit of a... A positive way to finish this video off. Obviously, it's not going to happen, guys, straight away. In case any of you are a bit concerned by that, absolutely no chance. The only reason I've talked about it is because the article was just so, just so incorrect. It was so factually incorrect that I thought it was hilarious to talk about it. Just a good laugh and a good way of ending this video off. So, I do appreciate you all watching. Enjoy the game tomorrow. Of course, vlog will be on after the game. Has to be three points. No excuses tomorrow. Has to be all three. And I'm looking for the Manchester United during the week. Big game for us. Big game as well. Look at Man U and look at Chelsea. See how they, they get on this weekend. But we've got to focus on ourselves first. Let's do our job. Let's get our job done. And let's make sure we pick up three huge points in our final home game at St. James's Park. How are the lads? Let's get out there and let's make the most out of it.